Welcome to the first session of the series of the interactive training in reduction and analysis of interferometric data tutorial, iTrain. And um, today uh, we are going to learn how to run the pipeline to create images, um, clean images uh, from ALMA calibrated data. Uh, this presentation is the result of the effort of a group of people that include Luke Maut, Emily Moravec, uh, Carmen Torivio, and Daniel Tafoya. In order to do this tutorial, a number of straightforward preparations are necessary to be done beforehand, and all the instructions to prepare for the tutorial are in a document name instructions, and it can be found uh, in the link that is shown at the bottom of this slide. Uh, the slides of this tutorial themselves can be downloaded from the same link. So this is an overview of the tutorial. Uh, first, I'll show you where the data that we're going to be working with is located within the package that you just downloaded. Uh, then I'll tell you how to run CASA with the pipeline and the ways uh, to check that it has been loaded correctly. Uh, subsequently, I'll describe the list of steps that need to be run and immediately we'll start with the hands-on part of the tutorial where you will uh, be running tasks uh, along with me in order to create your images. And, um, uh, and in the end, I will comment on some final remarks. So then these are the steps that were already done and uh, that I suppose that uh, already, um, I mean, during this, this tutorial, um, they are already assumed to be uh, to have been done. Um, so basically, we will start uh, just um, uh, after the uh, after um, having done the uh, what it is shown here. So um, I assume that, uh, for example, if you uh, want to uh, re-image or do imaging of a um, of data that was retrieved from the Alma Science Archive. Well, I assume that you already downloaded the data and that you have already uh, run the script uh, for PI. So after running the script for PI, basically what you have is that uh, you have a directory that is called calibrated and inside calibrated, you will have uh, several other folders and uh, uh, that are shown here in the bottom of this slide. And then you have products, raw data, and then you have the measurement sets, and then you have a uh, a directory that is called uh, working. So in the package that you uh, already downloaded, uh, that is uh, shown here at the, at the top of this uh, slide, um, uh, it's a tar file. So if you already untire it somewhere in your computer, then you will have this directory tree. So this uh, directory tree is very much like uh, what you would have uh, after running the script for PI after having downloaded the data from the Alma archive. So then you will have um, uh, uh, all these um, uh, folders and particularly you will have a folder like, that is uh, called calibrated. Like I said, it, it, this, this folder should be there after having run the script for PI. And then inside this calibrated folder, uh, you will have these um, other folders and um, we're going to be uh, working in the working folder. So then um, if, you, uh, if you go to your terminal, then you have to change to uh, this, wor this working folder. So um, I will give you just a few seconds for you to move to that, uh, um, to that uh, working folder. And actually I'm going to do it uh, myself in my own computer. So once you move to the working folder in your terminal, if you uh, list the files and directories that you have inside that folder, it should be something like this. So you're going to have a, a well, different uh, calibration tables and uh, some other uh, files that were created during the, um, when you run the script for PI. So, okay, then I assume that you're already inside your working folder and inside your working folder, then you're going to run a, a CASA and you can run CASA uh, with either of these two comments. Uh, it may depend on how you have your, um, uh, the, the uh, settings of, of, the, of your CASA, 
but uh, for example, in my case, uh, just by typing CASA, then space, then dash dash uh, pipeline, then it would run. Some for some some of you maybe CASA pi uh, space dash dash pipeline would work. And one thing that you have to uh, be careful is that, or make sure is that um, uh, it is a double hyphen, and there is no space between the double hyphen and pipeline. So it has to be exactly like it is shown here. So um, dash dash to 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 hyphens and then um and then pipeline otherwise then casa will will open it will it will start but the pipeline will not be loaded and so then it it later it will fail when it will try to um uh, to to run some pipeline uh, pipeline tasks so then um if you do it uh, correctly you're going to get some um some messages uh, like this and particularly, you're going to have a, a part in, in the messages that appear that are uh, like, like the ones uh, shown here, highlighted here. And that indicates that the, the, the tasks of the, that are particular for the pipeline are correctly loaded. So then um, uh, the first thing that we're going to run in CASA is this uh, task or this um, command uh, just like it is uh, here, you can actually, if you have this presentation, uh, you can just copy paste from the presentation. Otherwise, it's, it's a double underscore and then this um, retro, retro CASA exceptions equals true. And this is necessary to make sure that ca the CASA exceptions are retrown. And um, this is mainly uh, necessary when you're running uh, several tasks of the pipeline. Uh, uh, for example, in a, in, a, in a script, and then uh, so that it doesn't uh, stop uh, uh, running the different tasks if there is a problem, but it just continues to running the, 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 the different tasks uh, one after the, the other. But anyways, we're, we're going to run it here. So then if you um, run that, uh, that uh, command um, first, and then, um, we are going to run another command that it is shown here, that is the H um, in it, and then the round parenthesis. And this is for um, initiate the pipeline context. And I'm going to, to talk about the, the pipeline context a, a little bit more later, but uh, for the moment we need to initiate it. And the pipeline con uh, context, when we initiate the pipeline context, basically what we do is that uh, we create a, um, uh, the, a folder is created uh, where there would be information of the of this run of the pipeline, um, and there will be also the web log will be inside this folder, and uh, the context will ha will have the information of the run of the pipeline, and then um, if you, for example, have to leave the run in the middle before making images, let's say, or something like that. And then you and, and then you decide to come back later on and and take things from where you left. Then you can just load the context again, and then you will you can start from where you left. So then it uh, so it is always necessary to initiate the context of, of the pipeline. I'm going to speak a little bit more on this on how to how to save it, how to load it again, and so on uh, a little bit later. But for the moment, we're going to initiate the the. The, the context, and you will have a, a message that uh, that is um, just like the one is here. This number will be different for 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 each each um, of you, um, and this number has to do with the date of creation of the context and also the time of creation. So, um, if um, uh, for example, like every time you run the pipeline and then you, you initiate a context, you, you will create a different context that will have a different name. But um, uh, like I said uh, before, if you want to continue using the same context, you can reload the same context that you were working on. So then the next uh, tasks or the next, ne next uh, um, uh, commands that you have to uh, type in your in your CASA prompt is import glob. This is basically because we are going to define a global variable that includes uh, the, all the, um, the calibrated measurement sets uh, in, in uh, 
variable that in this case we're going to call my this. So then um, if you uh, also type this other comment here, uh, my this equals to glob dot glob and then uh, and then inside the um, apostrophes the star ms, then uh, all the measurement, the calibrated measurement sets will be uh, in this global variable. And this is going to be used afterwards when we import the data. So if you type in your CASA uh, prompt like this, my this, you should have something, something that it, it looks like this, which means that yes, the, the, um, the global variable has been defined correctly. So then the, um, the steps of this tutorial are uh, these 14 steps. Uh, we're going to go one by one. And um, the first uh, five, five steps are basically related to import and prepare the data for, for uh, further, pros uh, yes, further analysis. Then the next uh, three steps are basically for finding and subtracting the continuum. Then uh, once we do the subtract, well, once we find and subtract the continuum, the, the, the next uh, commands is basically for making the images and the cubes. And then finally, there is one um, final command for exporting the, the, the images uh, into FITS uh, files. So this is, this is uh, like, a, a, like a, um, in general, what we're going to be uh, doing. And the, so the, the first uh, thing we, ha we have to start uh, right away with this command with import data and in this way. So if, if you uh, in your CASA um, terminal or in your CASA prompt, then you basically type this uh, import data and then this equal to my this, which is the global variable that we de defined previously. And then uh, this DV service equals false, which is, it, that this is necessary um, so that uh, um, it doesn't use online flux catalog on import. So then basically you um, type this, um, this command and um, several messages will start appearing in the terminal and uh, in your CASA terminal and also in the CASA logger. And it's going to take like around 10 minutes to finish depending on your uh, computer. But um, uh, on average, I think it's going to take around that time. So, well, then uh, basically now the pipeline will be doing things by itself. And then we have some time to uh, talk about uh, uh, some um, other things. Uh, so then this is, these are the steps that we are going to be following uh, uh, before the continuum subtraction. So right now, uh, when we uh, run in poor data, basically uh, this, this task will apply binary um, data flags and will calculate some properties of the measurement sets. Um, the, afterwards, we're going to run MS transform, which will create the measurement sets for the for, of the target for imaging. Then uh, later on, we're going to run flag targets and it will create some flags for the science uh, target data. And, uh, and then we are going to run image pre-check that will use a representative uh, source and, and spectral window containing the representative frequency that uh, the, the PI uh, selected in the, in, the in the observing tool to create the synthesized beam and to make sensitivity estimates for the aggregate bandwidth and representative bandwidth for three uh, values of robust parameters. Um, then uh, we're going to run make M list, which will determine image parameters such as uh, image size, cell size, etc., to uh, be used for a subsequent uh, task that it is, it, which is make images, and it's the one that is going to create the actual images. So then. Um, while waiting for import data to finish, uh, I would like to say to, to, to say a few comments on, on the pipeline tasks. Uh, some of you may be wondering um, uh, what the prefixes of in the tasks names uh, mean. This HIF, HIFA, HIFB, HSD, et cetera, et cetera. So then uh, as, as it is shown here, if it, has an, uh, if it doesn't have anything after HIF, 
means that it's, it's, it's a task that is for, for the um, interferometric pipeline and it can be used for ALMA and the VLA. And if it has an A, it means that it's a, it's a task that it is only for ALMA. And if it has a V, it means that it's a, a task that is only for, for the VLA. And if it's a HSD, it means that it's a, it's a task of the single dish pipeline. So you can actually um, uh, list the um, uh, tasks that the pipeline uses by typing task list in your, in your CASA prompt. And then, um, and then there is a section that says user defined tasks. And there will be many, uh, there will be a list of, of, of uh, uh, tasks with these prefixes, HIF, B, HIF, A, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can type, uh, you can use help, for example, to, to explore what they do and what the inputs and, and so on are for each of the tasks. Um, also, uh, one thing is that you can put all these tasks in a uh, Python script, like it is shown here. And then uh, you can basically um, run that uh, script in this way by, uh, by um, typing exec file in your CASA and then the name of your, of your script. And then basically the pipeline will do all the tasks one by one uh, uh, automatically. And then you just have to wait. You just run, you just run the, the script and then wait until uh, it finishes the last um, uh, task, and and then you will uh, you will you will have your um, your images and your web log, and then you can check all the results. A few words also on handling the pipeline context that I already mentioned before. So um, the pipeline, like I said, always runs with a context. So then you always have to initiate the context with this uh, task, uh, h init, and then. Um, at some, uh, at any point during your, uh, while you're working with the pipeline, you can save your context. In this case, for example, um, I um, put this name as an example. For example, you can save it as h save, and then you put my context dot context, for example. And then um, once you have that context uh, saved, uh, you can, for example, quit Casa and do some other things that you have to do. And then if you, if you come back and then you run H resume and then the name of the context, then you can start wherever you left. And so uh, it is recommended that at, at um, different points of your analysis, you save your context so that uh, in case that anything happens, I don't know, if CASA may crash or that um, you just have to, to leave you always have your uh, context uh, saved and then you don't have to start from the beginning. You don't have to re-import your data, et cetera, et cetera, but you, you can already start from uh, where, where, basically from where you left. Um, so then uh, when you run, for example, H uh, save uh, and then the name of your context, you will have an, another file that is called that, that it, it will be named as you as you name it. So in this case, for example, there will be a, a file that is called my context dot context. Next, it will be in, in the same uh, directory and working and together with the folder that we already had when we run a, a H in it, uh, which is the, the one the folder where the 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 web log is. And actually, if well, in the package that you already got that we uh, that we uh, delivered for you for this tutorial, there's already a folder that is called pipeline, and it has a name. And then there's also already a context. This folder and this context are created when you run the the, the script for PI, and uh, and so then they already they already have some um, some. Uh, uh, files in it and some information. But uh, in this tutorial, um, we're not going to use this. I mean, this, like I said, these are created when automatically, let's say, when, when you run script for PI. But um, for your own analysis, you will have to create your own um, uh, uh, context. And you will have to have your own pipeline uh, folder where your web log will be. 
So yes, and speaking about the web log, so then where is my web log? Then if you go to the, um, if you go inside this uh, folder uh, of the context, and then th there will be another folder that is called HTML. And inside there will be a, a HTML uh, uh, file called index.html. And this you will open it with Firefox. This is the one that you have to open with Firefox. Uh, probably at the moment, uh, well, the, um, the task uh, import data is still uh, running. Um, um, but uh, well, you can when when the when the when the task uh, finishes uh, running, then you can you can go to this folder, and then you can search for your web log. And um, uh, if you open it, then um, you will have something like this. This is in Firefox, so you will have a um, a web page which uh, will have uh, well different parts, and then well you, you actually we. We can already, uh, or during this tutorial, we will explore it a little bit. But particularly, you can go uh, to this option that is called uh, by task. And in that option, uh, if you click there, you will have a list of tasks that you have already run. So for example, the first thing that will appear in your list will be the results from import data. So then uh, you will have uh, a um, uh, line like this, and then you, it, this is a clickable link. So you, will, you, you could click and then it will open and it will show you um, the information and the outputs from running that uh, task. So then the next uh, task is MS uh, transform. So then basically you will just run it like this, like it is uh, in this, um, and this um, line here. So just um, put it in your CASA prompt and then run it. And, um, and then basically what you will be doing uh, by running this task uh, is that you are going to be creating measurement sets for your targets. So then uh, in your working directory, now you will have two more measurement sets, but those measurement sets will be only uh, for your target. For the people who already finished uh, running uh, import um, import uh, uh, data, uh, you can you can find your your web log here. You go to working, and then uh, you go to your um, to the folder of your of the name pipeline, the one that you created with with h in it in it, and then there will be h HTML, and then there is the uh, the web log. I see that uh, some people are uh, wondering, yes, where their web, web log is. So yes, it is, it is here and located there. So then, um, yeah, so then uh, for people who already launched uh, MS Transform, um, uh, well, it may take uh, probably, I don't know, like um, around 1.5 minutes to finish or something like that. Then um, uh, the next task that we will run is flag, flag uh, targets. And, um, and actually this may take very short, not, uh, not 1.5 minutes, it may take uh, for some people maybe 1.5 minutes, for others it would be very quick. But in this case, in this particular data set, there will be no flag for the target. Um, uh, uh, Yes, unless some uh, uh, problematic data is in, in there. But uh, if you, for any reason, would like to flag something, then you can um, actually, there is a file that, um, that it is in the, in the um, uh, it's, it's located here in calibrated products. And then there is some uh, templates for, for the, uh, files for flagging data. So then you, if, you, if you open um, uh, any of these files or, or under calibrated and then under products, there you will see um, uh, uh, this, this file and inside the file there, are, it, it is uh, uh, shown how to, um, 
how to put different flags. For example, I don't know if you want to flag one in 10 hours, something like that. And then you can copy this flag uh, template uh, table to your working directory. And so if, if those files are in the working uh, directory, then they will be picked up by flag targets and, and, those, ta and those flags will be applied to the data before the, the imaging. So then, um, uh, so then flag targets, if you, if you set it like this pipeline mode automatic, then the pipeline will try to find some flags for you. Or if you want to do it manually, like I said, then you modify this, this file and then you just copy it to your working directory and then you can apply those flags. Okay, so then um, the next uh, task that we will run is uh, image pre-check. And um, this uh, may take a little bit longer. So it may take like five, like seven minutes probably. And uh, it, this task is useful if you want the pipeline to figure out the best parameters uh, in order to get the, um, the resolution of the original science goal. Um, and uh, if, if you don't run this, then the default robust parameter that will be used is 0 0.5. But um, yes, basically uh, this will um, determine the, uh, the, the, the parameters to, to, to better match the resolution that you wanted. Um, so then if uh, you run this um, command or this uh, task, here, image pre-check, and then pipeline mode automatic. Uh, then uh, you then we can uh, actually um, uh, take a look at the web log. But uh, remember that you um, uh, should keep checking your web log to see uh, the uh, the outcome of the different tasks that you're running, and um, and uh, you have to refresh to see um, the new tasks or the new outcomes from the different tasks that you're running. And, uh, and, and remember also to save your context uh, regularly so that um, you always have um, your, um, your procedure uh, up to date to the, to, the moment, to the moment where you, um, to the step where you are currently. So then uh, in the web log, then uh, at this point, um, or after running image pre-check, you should already have all these uh, entries in your, in your by task uh, um, section. And uh, you can um, uh, click there. I mean, once, once this task finishes the image pre-check, because in principle, I assume that you just, uh, you just uh, launched it uh, a few moments ago. So then, um, uh, it'll take some time for it to appear in your web log. But, um, but well, if you click there, then you will have some um, values like this. So I'm going to open a web log here on my own. Okay, so are you seeing it now moving? Yes, now, yes. It's, now it's moving, yes, thanks. Yeah, okay, so then you can click in the different measurement sets and then you can, um, you can see the spectral setup and the, and the antenna setup, weather, intense. And then you can do it for the different measurement sets. And, um, and well, like I said, you have different information. This is, the, I mean, basically it's, it's, it's like the web log that comes with the, with the products when, when, when you download data from the archive. And, um, and well, like here are the, the tasks that we are just running right now. Uh, and, uh, and so far, well, once you image pre-check finishes, um, you should uh, already have uh, up until here. So then I'm going to move on. So then the next thing that uh, we will do is uh, make im list. And uh, in this particular, um, uh, or at this point, we're going to use uh, this the spectral mode as equal to MFS. And, um, and this spectral uh, mode will do the aggregate continuum for each of the spectral uh, win uh, windows. And these parameters will be, uh, this particular spectral mode will be used uh, uh, for making the images in step nine. 
So for the moment, then you just run like this, uh, this task, make a list. And um, uh, while running uh, make a list, I'm just going to uh, tell you quickly um, what will be the next uh, three steps that we're going to do, which is basically finding and subtracting the continuum. So uh, find cont will do that, what it says. Basically, it will find the, the, the continuum. It will, it will make a, it will, um, a make a, a, a dirty image tubes. It will generate and an evaluate a mean spectrum of a mask region of the, of, of the line plus continuum image. And, um, and then it will calculate the frequency ranges that are the least likely to contain any line emission. And then UV confit will fit that uh, continuum and then it will, sub, uh, it will subtract that, con uh, the, the, then um, it, will, it will be uh, used to subtract the continuum. And, uh, uh, and then finally UV con sub will, uh, will do the, um, uh, will apply the, the, the calibration uh, table created by in UV confit and it will create a new uh, column in the data uh, that is called uh, corrected and in the corrected it will have all the 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 continuum sub subtracted data and and the and the one the, the continuum plus line emission will be left in the data column so uh, then after having after uh, after having run these three uh, tasks um, we will have a new uh, column in our measurement sets with the with the continuum subtracted um, data so um, then we will, uh, oh, one, one thing is that, um, well, uh, the task uh, find cont will do that. We'll find the continuum, but actually the, um, the, the package already comes with a file that is called cont uh, dot dat. And, um, and it already has some, um, uh, ranges, the frequency ranges where the pipeline has already previously found that it is likely to have to be the, where, where the continuum is likely to be. So that uh, file actually could be copied to the working directory. And then you can, um, you, uh, the, the pipeline doesn't really have to find the continuum, but already just, it just reads this file and, and then it, it will be quicker. So actually, so then, or you can even modify this this file if you if you if you already know which are the 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 the, the, the frequency ranges that you would like to uh, include your your continuum. So then, um, this is something that I say here. It, it's an optional uh, it's an optional step. But I, for this for this tutorial, I think it would be best if you if you do this so to save some time. So if you go to your calibration uh, folder, which is at the same level as the calibrated folder, inside calibration, there you will find the cont.dat, and then you copy that uh, file into your working directory. And, and so then when you run the, when you run a, a find cont, then uh, basically it will just read that, uh, that file. So then uh, if you copy that um, uh, file into your working directory, then, um, then uh, and then you run the task find cont uh, with this uh, as it is shown here. So then basically you say find cont and then pipeline mode automatic, and then you run it. And um, uh, if, and in this, if you if you use this option that you copy the file, then basically in your in your web log you will just have that um, you will have your the step the find cont, but uh, it will not show um, the spectrum of the uh, showing the, the the continuum ranges. But if you run it without that file, then actually in the web log you would be able to see the spectrum and it will show you the velocity ranges or the or the frequency ranges where the the continuum was was found so i will show you here uh, how it would look like 
if you had run uh, or if you run the find cont without the cont dot that file, but like I said uh, for this um, for this tutorial, I, I recommend you to just to copy this file in the working and then run it, uh, so to save some time. And then uh, if you go to your web log after running find cons, uh, you will see something like this. But remember, this is when you run it without the, this file. So then you will you will you will have all this um, this uh, uh, spectra. And then if you click on that, you will see the different. Um, you will see this this. Uh, uh, blue bars showing where the continuum is or where the, the, the pipeline found the continuum and those will be the frequency ranges that it will it will use for cross extracting the continuum. So then um, yes then uh, we're going to uh, run UV con fit to uh, fit a continuum you um, it is run in this way um, just like this. And then it will take some some time. Then, like I said, after having copied the concat cont dot that file into your working directory and having run find cont, then the next step is um, to run uv cont fit. And um, like I said, you run it like this. And then when once it is done, then you run uv cont sub. And then that will uh, do what I already said that it will create a, a, another column where that is called corrected and is where your uh, continuum subtracted data will be stored. And again, remember to just keep checking at your web log, the outcome in your web log and then refresh and save your context um, to be able to come back uh, at any time later. At, the, at this point, so I'm going just to, to mention what we're going to do next, uh, which is basically the final part. And is uh, now we're going to um, uh, do the images. Now that we have our, our uh, continuum subtracted data, we will be doing the different images, which is uh, basically what the, our final goal in this tutorial. And, this, uh, and, and that will be done by, um, having um, uh, blocks of these two tasks. One is the make im list and then make images, which is the, the one that actually runs the clean to make the image. And then with make im list, uh, we will determine the image parameters, the image size, cell size, robust, et cetera, et cetera. And, and those, uh, once those parameters are determined, then you will, uh, we will run make images and uh, pipeline or in this case, well, CASA will uh, uh, will run T clean, and then and we will get our our different um, images. Um, uh, in this case, uh, first uh, is if you remember in step five, we already run uh, make im list with spec mode MFS, which uh, create creates a, a aggregate co a continuum for uh, for for the different. Um, for the different uh, spectral windows, basically it makes uh, it just averages the whole emission in, in the different spectral windows. And so, if you if you run make images just like that, then it will create the images for the different uh, for the different spectral windows. Then I would just like to say that basically, um, then the next the 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 next steps that you don't have to finish in this uh, tutorial right now, but I mean you can just keep playing afterwards. Is that, for example, um, well, one thing that you can do is that if you go to your uh, to your web log, then you can uh, I mean once this task finishes, uh, they make Im make images uh, finishes, then you you go to your web log and then if you click there, you will see. Um, you will see something like this, where you will already have some thumbnails with your with the with the images, and then if you click on those images, uh, well, you you can see you can uh, enlarge them, and uh, and then you can see well, well if you had a mission where your mission is, and then there is an option there. It says view other QA images. If you click there, and view uh, other QA images then you will be able to see uh, some other uh, 
um, things such as, for example, the cleaning mask and the residuals, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, for example, you can, uh, if you click there, you can see what was the cleaning mask that was used for the, for the imaging. Actually, the pipeline uses this option, auto masking, and the auto masking, uh, well, it has some, some, some inputs and those inputs have some uh, parameters and uh, they depend, the, the pipeline will use different values of those parameters depending on what kind of uh, observations uh, is dealing with. So for example, if it's uh, for a short baselines of the main array, the 12 meter array, it will use a set of parameters uh, also depending whether it is continuum or spectral line. And if it's long uh, baselines, then it will use slightly different uh, parameters. Or if it is a seven meter um, array, the, the compact array, or uh, if it is, uh, th there are some parameters that are tentative, uh, if it is a combined for, for, for both of them. Um, so this, this, you can see this table where th these are the values used by the, by the pipeline and they have been extensively tested and they seem to be, to work very, very well. But if you are not happy with those parameters and, um, and then you would, first of all, if you would like to check which parameters it used, you can always go to the, to the bottom of, of this, of this um, page and make images. And then you can click in the view option, and then you will see the, the, the log of CASA. And there you will see all the parameters that were used uh, for, for, the, um, for, for the cleaning, for the task to clean. And then you can actually, for example, you can, you can do it this manually. You can copy this, this task, and then you can modify the different values for the, for the thresholds and so on that were used in this multitask. So, well, this is um, this is for the, that is uh, uh, for the auto masking, and then uh, then basically um, then you can move on to the other part of the of the imaging, which is for example you can change the spec spec mode to continuum, and then uh, you will make an image of the of the channels that have continuum emission, we, not not the line emission, and then you just run again make images. And then it will, you will launch, you will launch it, and then it will create the the, the image of the continuum for for uh, for for the different spectral windows. Um, uh, other than afterwards, I'm here. I'm moving now very 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 fast, but actually it's it's just something that you have to try because this will take some some time uh, running uh, T clean to make the images. But you can change the spec mode to cube. And now it will make uh, a, a, a cube uh, uh, of, the, of the spectral windows, but with the continuum subtractive. Then you just, uh, you run the make image list like this. And then after that, you run a make images task with automatic mode. And then you will create your, your spectral cubes without the continuum. And um, again, you can, just, you can just play with the different uh, parameters. For example, you can set robust equals to minus 0 0.5, spectral window 24, HM uh, in size 60. It will create a, an image with robust zero, minus 0 0.5 of the spectral window 24, the aggregate continuum in the image size of 60 pixels only. Or um, uh, for example, you can just define you, I want to make an image of only 200 channels starting from this frequency. And then you will, yes, you can, you, basically you can, you can play with the different, um, with the different uh, inputs. And uh, actually, if you would like to know all the inputs that uh, this task has, you just type uh, in your CASA prompt, you type uh, help and HIF making list. And then you can see all the different, um, all the different inputs that this um, that this task uh, has, and uh, finally you just run this um, this task, uh, export data, and then you will export your data into FIT files. And uh, and and if you say image imaging products only equals true, then basically you will only make FIT files for your for your images only. Um, and these are some final notes. Uh, uh, 
basically uh, once your continuum subtraction stages is uh, are done it's just a combination or loops of these tasks make in list and make images and uh, and 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 so you just play with the different parameters like i showed like i told you just before and then i uh, well just keep a look at your web log uh, to see the things that you're doing and then um, if you make a mistake don't worry you just uh, uh, there, there will be some, if you see some red thing in the web log, don't worry, you, it's, you just check what it went wrong. It, sometimes it's not really um, critical, so you can just continue uh, and, and to the next step. Um, um, if, um, uh, well, like I said, you just, if you want to change the parameters, you just change it in this task, make Im in, make in list, and then run uh, image, make images. And um, um, yeah, uh, you can do, you, you, you should do your images, your image cubes um, separately for each spectral window so that you have a full control uh, of, um, of the fine tuning and do the edge save uh, regularly. And if you have, if you want to, to do more examples or follow other examples of how to run the pipeline for imaging, you can always visit this uh, web page in the CASA guides. Uh, there are also many examples that you can you can follow uh, uh, um, related to making images with the pipeline. And that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have further questions on this tutorial on how to use the pipeline for imaging, please do not hesitate to contact us in the email um, put in the description under this video. Thank you.